Uh, hi guys, so um, today, like uh, as advertised, I meant to do uh, go on, um, how do I call it, on this IG live with um, Dr. Drew, um, also the media guy for the um, for the minister for um, for the minister of uh, youth and sports. So pretty much what this um, IG live is going to do. To highlight um, the importance of alternative football in okay. football development. Hello, hello, Drew. Hello, how you doing? I'm here now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so take uh, take it away then. Mm. Yes. Where, where's Kemi? I think you should add Kemi. We can have three people on it, and uh, Kemi can moderate. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I can't see. I can't see her yet. This is the new app, you know. I've uh, update, I I've just updated my one, so I don't. I can't see Kimmy. I can't see Kimmy. Sorry, uh, Kimmy, if you're on, just maybe just uh, send, like, write something in the comments to notify me that you're here. Because at this point, I can't see Kimmy yet at all. This room is a bit dark. Oh. Okay. I think your your fans are there now. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. They're always, yeah. always, um, really, always really supporting. Just to always supporting. That's pretty cool. Yes. Um, Kemi, Kemi, and Daniel actually. Because I, I can't see, I can't see Daniel either. Alright, so uh, Juba, while while we're waiting, uh, it would be nice for you to like, like, like talk about yourself and uh, mm -hmm. like what you've done so far, like in the uh, in the sports industry for sure. Yes, uh, I'm in the sports space. Uh, I'm a football agent and I'm an athlete brand uh, expert. You know, so I've I've been in sports for a few years now. I actually have a degree in sports management, so um, you know we just it's, it's about you know changing the game, trying to do something different, not the same old uh, way of managing players. You know, you know, like uh, in the past, agents just sign a contract and they go home to sleep. Yeah. But this time around, you know, you need to be proactive and try you know to position them well. To make them marketable, yeah. you know. So, and the young, um, the young players coming up, you need to give them the right, the right man mindset. You know, because yeah. it's all about the mindset. If you have the right mindset, the right attitude, they can go far. So, that's uh, I've been in this space for a bit now. So, anything concerning, you know, football management agency, that's my thing. You know, but I'm oh, coming what? from obviously I'm coming from uh, go ahead. For you for you what was like the um the main challenge for you when you started? Because uh, I'm pretty sure like you said you've been you've been in this for a while now. So there's like mm -hmm. decades of you uh in this industry. So what was like the what would you say was the most challenging thing for you? What was like the main challenge? Yeah, there's there's uh, there were a lot of challenges to be honest with you. But uh, yeah. we overcome we overcame them, like, you know, <laughs> because um, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, competition, the barriers were high, you know, it's, it's you know, when you talk about uh, sports management, it's not for everyone, it's a cutthroat, it's a lot, um, it's, it's a situation whereby, you know, it's a, it's a money game, so anything involving money, a lot of people will want to, you know, they want to have, uh, they, they want to take the whole space. They don't want people in, you know, so, but uh, over time, you know, with, uh, with hard work, you know, people will get, people will notice you. It's, it's, it, to be honest with you, football management is like a mafia game, but uh, mm -hmm. we're trying to change it now and making sure it's open for everybody to come in and work, you know, yeah. so that's it. 
No, I agree. I, I, def I definitely do agree. Um, I know it's even most times, like you said, one thing about making uh, this football players understand how much of a brand they can become and helping them get the best out of the, uh, the talents that they do possess. Because at the end of the day, they are more than just football players. They are role models. And in the grand scheme of things, they are brands or corporations in a way. Just like what we see with Christian as well. They, they are big business, you know. So that, that has to, they have to like, you know, manage themselves well, you know. It's not just playing the football. It's, uh, as you said, their brand has to do more. They have to do more charitable work. They need to work in the community. They need to have a story to tell. They need to do things that will make people, you know, attracting. They have to. They have to attract people to them, to themselves. Because yeah. if you're just thinking about just the football, by the time you finish, once the football ends, <laughs> your life ends as well. Is it Kemi oh, here? Sorry. So you need to get add. Oh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to find Kemi actually. I can't see her yet. Oh. No, no, sorry, Drew, sorry, I'll go on. Yeah, so that's it, you know. It's, it's something of you need to have a passion for what you're doing. I'm passionate about, you know, helping others, you know. I'm selfless, so people say. So you must have, uh, you, must, you must be a people's person. You must be able to tolerate, you know, talent are talent, music, comedy, you know, you need to be patient to these people. You need to be able yeah. to tolerate a lot of, you know, you need to have time for them. You know, it's, uh, it's like a husband and wife relationship. Okay, I've got Kevin. Hey. Hi, guys. Finally, I'm in. How are you? Now, now you guys got me as moderator at the last minute, but it's all right. It's okay. I can so, chill, on the first and foremost, your um, fans are complaining that your video is blurry. I so I don't know I if you can wipe the lens or because these I these people want to see you in all your glory, other and with I, a blurry I lens. Where are you? Are you are you in Lagos? Are you? Both of, yeah, I, I think that Vijay connects better. See, his his seat is, is just like the Big Brother seat, like you know. Kevin. Hi, George. I see George. Ozo just, just cleaning his lens or we're trying to fix because of everyone complaining that uh, they can't see him properly. Mm -hmm. where well, they can see me. <laughs> yes, I they can. Well, all right. I think, I don't know if that's I a bit... It's, I hope the that's internet, a it's the internet connection. Yeah, I, I think it is actually. Uzo, can you put the topic there so people, when people come in, they will know what we're talking about. Grass uh, it's a pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, so we're still learning how these things work. <laughs> okay, so guys, let's get to it because I, I believe we've wasted a bit of well. Let me not say, oh yeah, you're clear now, Ozon. Well done. I won't say we've wow. wasted time, but I'll Magic. say. Um, what happened? I think I think I it was know. the position of the lens. I, I think it's how the the camera was. How I put my camera. So we're still waiting for Kola to join us. So if you do see anything from Kola, we'll get him in. Kola is the media aide to the Honourable Minister of Youth and Sports Development. I'm the special assistant on ICT. I shouldn't be saying that when I can't even get my Instagram right. I'm special assistant on ICT and corporate relations. Um, and we've got here Drew. We've also got... Um, Kola is telling me he's finding it difficult. So once I've got you guys talking, I'll see if I can go and give Kola a hand. We've got Drew, we've got Ozo. So um, Drew's been telling us a little bit about himself. Um, I'm going to move to Ozo to, to tell us a little, about, a little bit about himself. Because Ozo, as we all know, we left the Big Brother house recently. We all know you as a Big Brother, ex-Big Brother housemate and uh, probably other things, but I won't say those other things. But, you know, a lot of people don't know so much about your passion for football even though we know you've got two shows going on now a lot of people don't know about your would i say the ambassadorship with juventus or um so tell us a bit about that tell us how that is contributing to grassroots football in nigeria and um 
and then we can bring in um, um, Drew and have the conversation on how we see these new things happening, how we can marry them with uh, um, the Real Madrid one, that the Real Madrid, I think that's how it's pronounced, that the Honourable yeah. Minister opened today in Port Harcourt, and how we can marry them and we can assist um, our young Nigerians in this uh, uh, fight for football because we know we're talented. That's, that's, that's non-negotiable. We know that. Um, but how do we harness this talent and turn it into something worth our while? So over to you, Ozo. I think, thank you, Kemi. Uh, first first and foremost, it's, um, I think everyone who went to the house, I was always um, high on sports and especially when we had the um, like the back game. So I was always high on um, on anything that has to do with football, which is like my first love when it comes to sports as well. But then uh, I think my love for sports in general even goes down to uh, American football, uh, tennis, uh, boxing, UFC. So things like this always get me excited. Pretty much that's what I have when it comes to entertainment for me. Entertainment for me is all mostly like sports. Things are sports related anyway. And um, as a result of that, I always wanted to work within the sports industry. And I had like a first class degree in economics, did my master's degree, business financial management as well. And I had an opportunity to maybe go work in like, um, all I call it like different spaces that were not like football or sports related. But then I knew that, okay, I just want to work in sports. And I had an opportunity to work with UEFA. I was a football academy analyst there. Then when I came back to Nigeria, I kind of found it difficult to get started, uh, to be honest. And I just said, okay, fine. I need to find a place where I can get a platform and which will let me get my message out. And I was fortunate enough to get into the Big Brother Nigeria show. And I think me, many people saw me and understood, okay, this guy's all about sports in general. And yeah, I, uh, since I left the house, I've had like lots of, like you said, uh, sports related jobs. And uh, with Juventus, what we're trying to do, uh, almost similar to what the minister did today when he uh, opened the Real Madrid uh, Academy in Portacot, is to identify what it means and find out and to show Nigeria and, and a whole what it means to improve talent development. Because that's where, that's where you have to, the change comes from. We could complain mm -hmm. about like the national team not being good, but then if the kids don't understand the basis of football, then that's where a problem is. Um, you need to, well, going down to uh, football education, the scouts, do they understand what, what a four corner module is? Do they understand what they, what they have to see when they're trying to position a player through anthropometric uh, uh, parameters, uh, sociological parameters, the tactical, technical parameters? Do the scouts understand what this is, what they need to do to, when you're trying to say, okay, project, project on a player, pretty much. And then you're trying to tell the coaches that are going to see this player at the football academy level or at the um, football club level that these are the facets that, of the player's game that need improvements. And these are the facets of the player's game that are really, really good as well. Do we have football academies to understand what it means to have an academy performance plan? Do we understand how we're going to break down our macro cycle, our meso cycle, our micro cycle? Our micro cycle is where we need to have the individual coaching, uh, coaching sessions our, our okay. meso side, we need to have the, the uh, coaching syllabus there. And then above everything, we have, need to have an identified football philosophy. And the football philosophy is, what brand of football do we want to play? What brand of football do we identify ourselves as? So it's mm -hmm. all the basic things. These are what grassroots football is all about. So that's where the problem is. So until we as a country, uh, okay, you have one hand Juventus doing it, you have Real Madrid doing it, but then... Mm -hmm until we as a country decide and say, this is where our problem is and we need to address this problem, then and only then mm -hmm. we'll be able to say, uh, we're putting out a national team that really understand who they are and the kind of, the identity of a football team that we could trust uh, moving forward. So pretty much that's what I did as a football academy analyst. My job was traveling um, to many football clubs and my job was to analyze and see, okay, if a football club says they are a possession-based football club, the training sessions are they based on 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 possessing the football? When I watch the football games, uh, are they be, are they like a possession based team, or are they playing a different brand of football from what they say that they are? So that's pretty pretty much what my job was. And then I had to write a report and send it back to the federation level, 
for them to be able to analyze and see the best way to make the football academies improve. So it's something I think we need here. Uh, does it take time? Yes. I've always said uh, Iceland, before they made it to the Euros and to the... Um, one uh, second. World Cup, Sorry, one second. Uh, Let me get my headphones. I can't hear properly. Sorry. Okay, fine. Uh, and I said um, Iceland, before they made it to the Euros and to the World Cup, most of the players, uh, most of the players in that team when the, the nation put together, like the builds in, um, the builds indoor football pitches, indoor football because of the weather, the pitch weather is really, really cold. And before they did those stuff, those kids were like, were, those players were like 12, between the ages of 11 to 13, 15. But then by the time they got to the Euros and the World Cup, many of them were like in their mid 20s to late 20s. So it takes time at times. Will it take us, Nigeria, uh, so much time to get there? Maybe. We may get there faster, we may get there slower than they do. But it's something that we need to do for you to be able to create a change. And uh, I'm sure um, uh, Dr. Drew has done a whole lot. Um, he has had a whole lot of experience with trying to um, see these players and understand where the deficiencies are. So for me, I'm just com I'm coming from a culture where a whole lot is being done to try and improve uh, football development. So coming here now is to try and pass on that knowledge that I have uh, to anyone that's willing to listen here to try and improve uh, football at the grassroots level, for sure. Great. Well done, Azar. I'm not so technical in football, so some of the things you were talking about are a bit too technical for me. But I guess um, the great understanding is, 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 is the fact that it needs to start from that very young age because yeah. I think that's... It's it's based on a good foundation, really. I think we've lost Dr. Drew, and I think Kola is also trying to get in. So you may wish to see if we can uh, if we can let them in. Have you yeah. got any requests from them? No, not yet. No. Let's see. Mm. Uh, okay. I'm trying to send something to Drew now. Yeah, I've sent I've sent something to Drew. Okay. Okay, you guys add me back in. We've added you. We've added you. I will not go on without you now. <laughs> okay, so um, what Ozo was talking about the technical side from an early, uh, from a very early age. Um, what has been your experience so far? Where have you seen challenges? Because I know you've worked with. You know, when we, we were in London, Mita was in London to that time. Uh, you know, we, I know you've worked with a lot of our Nigerian footballers that work for the English, that, sorry, that play for the English clubs and mm. some of their struggles playing for Nigeria or some of their struggles even leaving Nigeria and getting to the United Kingdom and being absorbed into, into clubs. What, what can we do better here in Nigeria to get our young ones ready for that particular journey? Yes, um... Well done, uh, Ozo. Well done, Kemi. I would say a big well done to Ozo. You're so, so much on point. You can't even, I can't even believe it. You really, Thank really you. studied this stuff, you know. You're so on point because this is the challenges we're facing. So, and you, you've, you've got, we have the challenges, but you've got a solution. I think, to be very honest, the government or whoever in Nigeria should give you more attention, put you in the right place for you to, like, deliver. Because... This is this is just by the, the philosophy of the of the of football, you know. And yeah, we can say the Juventus, Real Madrid, they're doing the right things, but we still need to depend on ourselves. And the biggest challenges we are facing, from my own experience, eighty-three percent of our players, you know, that leave Nigeria to go for trials abroad, they fail the trials. And when they fail the trials, people will be like, "Oh, uh, home problem." The guy is too good. The guy, there's nothing like the guy is so good, too good. You need to know the basics, you know. You need to know how to hit the ball. Me, I'm not a technical person, yeah. I'm more like the business side of football. But I know for sure that Ozo is saying the truth and nothing but the truth. Because this is it's a major problem. This is a, you know, it's a major problem because they will say, oh, people will come and say, ah, this guy is the best in this area. Nobody can. This guy is too good. It's too like, it's okay. We'll take the guys to try. We'll fail the trial. People will go for trials like six, seven times. They'll fail. People will say, ah, no, no, there's something wrong. But it's just the basics. So we need that uh, fundamental uh, arrangement. We need to build an ecosystem whereby we catch them young. And I think what the Honorable Minister is doing, consigning 
uh, principal cup and all that. You know, it's very, very important. You need to catch them young and teach them, you know, because we cannot teach an old dog new tricks. You know, when people are leaving Nigeria at the age of 24, thinking they want to go to an, to an academy, for what? You know, if you've missed it, you've missed it. And unfortunately, people... Okay, Drew, so what you're saying is at the age of 24, one should not be looking to, to join an academy at that age. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. If it, there's a there's a structure in different countries, but I know the structure in England. By the age of sixteen, if you've not got a scholarship, like it's like education and football. If you've not got it at the age of sixteen, you might as well forget about it. And people start as early as eight. You know, you have to start early. They're watching you know the position. You might start as a striker. They might say, okay, no. They might see your strength and everything. And then when you're 16, it's like semi-pro, like you're ready, you're ready to go. So from the 16 to 18, but when you're 18, you sign your professional contract. So if you've not signed your professional contract at the age of 18, I don't know when you're going to sign it. So that, that's, uh, that's what, that, that's, that's a problem. That's, we have a lot of challenges in Nigeria, you know, that, okay, for instance, we have the, pro, the, the professional teams, like the Ian Bar and Kano Pillars and all that. Those teams need to have the academy. It's a, it's a chain, you know. You don't just pick people from the streets. People have to go through the academy, and then eventually, eventually, uh, eventually, uh, uh, get into the main team. So, yeah. really and truly, in Europe, they start from like age four, from four years old. You know, okay. like, you know, they play football most of their life. <laughs> so, oh, I see. So it's, it's all about catching them much younger. So also with these um, Juventus and Real Madrid academies now that have been opened in Nigeria, may I ask if you know if there are any more? Um, number one question. And I know there are some, some other academies actually, I must say. Do you think that they catch them as young as, so, you know, like Dr. Drew just said, at the age of four, do you think these academies uh, are equipped to catch them at that very early age or is it something that we still have a lacuna that we need to fill? No, I think most times, like you would even see, you even say, like uh, when you see the the training, I wouldn't really call it training sessions for like the on the four kids or the six kids. Pretty much, it's just for them to have a feel with the ball, for them to keep the ball around, for them to to uh, to uh, to start enjoying the game. That's pretty much what it does at that age. Uh, by the yeah, time they get, um, by the time they get to like what, like seven, eight, nine, then you start. Try, uh, you start almost trying to identify um, how well some kids are. But then one thing we've understood and we've also seen it like all across history is some people are actually late bloomers. Some people actually pick up really early as well. But then one thing, um, one thing Dr. Drew said that made so much sense is when you get these players when they're young and you have, um, back to my whole thing of, the football philosophy and making sure that it's it's stable and it's cast in stone is when you take a player uh, from the under-17 team and you plug him into the under-23s, he understands, let's say a winger, for example, he understands what's needed from a winger in that setup. He understands what it means, what it means for him, when it's time for him to cut inside, what it's, when it's time for him to stay outside. He understands what is needed from him. You take the player from the under-23 team and plug him into the national team he'll be able to perform. And this is something you can see that all the teams that have dominated world football for the longest time, Germany did it, Spain did it. The Netherlands, yes, maybe they didn't win as much, but they have constantly been doing it. So it's just, it's all about understanding that and saying, okay, this is what needs to be done. And, and Dr. Drew is correct. You start this thing at a very young age because um, uh, even for a country that as small as Latvia is, Already, the kids already understand what it means to receive the ball in tight spaces. So you have the, the uh, during the training session, so they set the cones almost like in a triangular uh, form. So the triangle behind the kid is almost like the kid almost feeling a player that's behind him. So the training session the is once the ball is into you into that position, you pop the ball either to the left or to the right, and then you spin and try and run it behind. These are understanding. So when the kid is on the pitch, he already has a vision of what, what's going on behind him. So when that pass comes in, he's not looking to control it and try and do something funny. No, he's, he knows that at that point, 
I need to pop this ball to my teammates on the right or on the left. I need to spin to be able to get away from the defender. So when we now, when we're watching our own national teams and we see a player receive the ball in that position and doesn't do anything with them, we're screaming, oh no, pass the ball, pass the ball. Or, or, or like, you should have passed the ball, all those kind of things. It's because he doesn't understand what the basics of the game is. But these kids are learning over there in the Western world at the age of what? Six, seven, eight. They already understand and, what and is meant. And, 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 sorry, sorry, and they master it over time. Even in their dream, they can do the same thing. you watch uh, football players, even at the academy level, many of them actually learn football the way we learn at school. I, I always use football, sometimes people don't say it's almost like school work. Not everyone, um, not everyone is, not everyone that had the first class degree is extremely brilliant. Some people studied over time to get a first class degree. Some people become very good or almost world class football players from constant practicing and learning what the game is and they're able to become almost world-class players, or if some, sometimes world-class players. And that's the thing. So if we don't do those things now and, uh, and put so much emphasis on it, then we're just going to keep losing out. We just keep hoping every day that, that God is a Nigerian. So all the time we pray that one person will lose the match or someone is going to draw, so Nigeria will qualify. Like, we do that every single time. And I think well, if we home. don't do that, we're going to lose out. That's for sure. I know because, um, like I said before, we Nigerians, I know 100% we're really talented in, in the area of football. But something, something is, 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 is making us lose out from time to time. But we're not really here to talk about probably like the Nigerian Super Eagles or the team in itself. We're talking about grassroots. We're talking about things that can be done. Obviously, you know, I'm, um, I'm, uh, I work for the Minister of Youth and Sports, and one thing that my minister has continuously, continuously discussed with us is we, we don't have all the solutions. The only way we can get the solutions is to talk to people like yourself, Oza and, and, and Drew, and find where, you know, you guys can prefer some solutions to us, and we can implement them, because we're, we're here to implement, but we don't know everything. So when, you know, people are, are always looking to government to solve every single problem, yes, government will solve every single problem, but we need to be able to identify the problems, and also talk with people like you guys to figure out, okay, what are the possible solutions? So, so far, I know that the Ministry of Youth and Sports, we've started the Headmasters Cup, the Principals Cup, yes, God, which yes. is taking the sport back to to grassroots, there are some talks about having um, uh, what do you call them, football pitches and sports arenas in um, what I say local government areas, not not to call them local areas, so that we sort of like build up more uh, um, football in those areas. But my fear is just that there's so much going on in so many little pockets all over the country. I think every Saturday morning, literally almost, you know, three, four times a week, you see a lot of young men with their football boots and, you know, they're all going to play. How do we synergize that? How do we harmonize that? Uh, so how are we able to take these, to pick out these talents? Because, you know, you can't have scouts going everywhere. I, I don't know if you gentlemen agree with me. Um, and how is it done in other countries, Drew? Uh, I think it's all about data. We don't have data. We need to get these data you know, uh, they, because like in the UK, that from the from the school, they will send if they have any good player, they will send the names out, and the the, the name is already in the system. So sometimes mm -hmm. we don't have a system that works, we don't have data. So uh, there's a particular player where that guy can't go. Like people will be like, where is the guy? This and that. They cannot really find him anymore. They'll see that people will start chasing. They don't know. They've moved house. They've you know. So we need to get it right from the from the from the beginning. Get our data right, you know. Uh, you know, and we need to most especially we need to train a lot of coaches. You know, you say they're playing football every week, week in, week out, every day. But are they doing the right things? You know, that's why people leave Nigeria. They, that the attitude they gain. I've seen players that they, they say they don't want to train, but they want to play. It is impossible. You know, let me deviate a little bit. It's impossible for you to play in a European club without training. People say he did the body. He can never be in the body. You understand? Because I kind of grew up in Germany. <laughs> I went to high school in Germany. Yeah. When I was playing basketball, I would be like so frustrated because the coach would be like, we will practice for like, we will practice like for 
uh, we'll practice for like maybe 30 minutes and play like for 15 minutes. We practice more than we play. You understand? So then you see some kids from Nigeria, they, they will say, oh, uh, the, 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 the training is too much. They just want to play a match. And with the, with, with the coaches abroad, if you do not train, if you don't do it according to what they tell you, you're not going to play the mm -hmm. next match. When they tell you, that you have to go, you know, you have to be, uh, like Nigerians, the players, they have to be teachable. You must be ready to learn. Even if you think you know how to play the football, you have to listen to the coach. Because if you do not listen, if he tells you in a football match, uh, I want you, I don't want you to go for the ball. I, don't, I just want you to mark this guy. I don't want you to go for any header. Just, I just want you to be on this player. If you do otherwise, you might not play the next three games or the next five games. So we need that discipline. We have to start teaching them discipline from, you know, from an early age that whatever your coach says goes. Other than that, you'll be in trouble. Okay, so what I've picked from this so far is we need more coach training. We need better data and you have to be ready to learn. So from a very early age, we need to teach our players that you need to be able to learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although, do you have anything to add to that? No, no, I, I definitely agree because um, when, when you're talking of data, it's uh, when I was talking about when you're teaching uh, scouts what to do, um, I know in, in the UK there, they have uh, the Elite Player Performance Plan, the EWP, E3P, sorry, Elite Player Performance Plan. And one thing also you need to, one thing uh, about keeping data is so when you have, uh, when you have a player scouting report, on the scouting report, it's just like uh, the results we get back from school at the end of every term. So the coach has already put in like uh, passing this, 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 puts the player's strengths, the player's weaknesses. So now, if you are now at the uh, at the higher levels of uh, club levels or whatever, when you now have this data that is all being stored here, and you're looking for, uh, let's say, a player that is an A-rated player or a B-rated player or a C-rated player, you're going to be able to go on that. Uh, you're going to be going. You'll be able to go to that database, and you're going to say, okay, this is the type of players that I'm looking for, and you're going to be able to find those players there. And what, uh, what Dr. Drew said about uh, the, um, the attitude of players, it all, also has to be factored in into the scouting reports. And those are under the, uh, I think, the sociological parameters. So that way, you're also going to have to highlight the background the player is from. So what kind of environment uh, did you see this player you scouted? Sometimes some scouts go as far as understanding the family dynamics of that football player. And that's where that question always comes in of, are you playing football because of what football can do for you or what you can help do for the sport? That's where that question comes into play. Now, uh, the good thing is if you have all these things installed, like you have the database and everything. So if I'm a coach now, and I know that the player that's coming in is a hothead, I'll talk to him differently. It's just like, it's just like being a parent. You don't talk to all your kids the same way. Or even uh, um, just like being in any type of friendship or relationship, whatever stuff it is, you understand the person you're talking to and that way you address them and you, you're you able to get through to them a certain type of way. So that's what coaches also do uh, out there in the West. They understand, for example, the way uh, a coach would talk to Balotelli was never the same way they'll talk to Cristiano or Messi, for example, you know? So it's all about right. understanding the type of player that's coming into your dressing room and that way you have an idea and say, okay, fine, if this player doesn't do well, how could I talk to him? On the other hand, again, you also have some players that can be really, really talented. But if they do something wrong, and let's say you go at them hard, they go into their shell and they're not able to perform. So you also need to know the players you need to talk to in a soft way. The players need to like really, really rattle their cage for them to really perform. And I think if this is something that I think that is fundamental that we really need to, to look at as well. Okay, that's great. Um... I don't know if there are any questions out there that we want to to read. Um, oh my God, I don't understand anything about football. I think I'm loving it already. That person, I think you're just loving us. Uh, it's not uh, got anything to do with the conversation. No, <laughs> um, no, no, King it has of to do with football. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If Nigerians chickens out, we are talking. Oh, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't read that. Sorry. The Minister of Sport and Minister of Education should merge and harness our young talent. So there should be a merger. But I, I think 
when it comes to this principal's cup and headmaster's cup i think that's a merger of education and sport at the same time so we are working on it but we 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 will keep going um since i was 5 i've been playing but uh, i've been playing no support no scout that's lucky Bellerin. So Lucky Bellerin, we'll hook you up with Dr. Drew and we'll see how we can get a scout to see you. Um, Ozo is good, smart man. Dr. Drew, we love you. This is not about loving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. So, uh, okay. Tell me, I'd like, I'd like to add one more thing because uh, Dr. Drew also uh, was talking about like what we need to do on the educational side as well. Another part that I think mm -hmm. we... There's a question ask, there, sorry. Just, just, there's one question someone's asking. Just sorry, tell me, have, have a look at that. No, sure, sure, please feel free. Yeah, so uh, I was saying uh, the parts Dr. Drew t touched on that when he was talking about the educational side of everything is if you look at the uh, side of, let's say, the media side, the sports media side, I think that part has, if you ask me, has it really improved? Yes, definitely it has. But then another part you need to, we also need to look at is also the side of the sports science and sports medicine as well. Or you could say football medicine. We're looking at the physios. Because the real fear now many people go into when they're trying to uh, play football here is there's always that lingering thing behind your head. If you get injured, would you I get the I can see right Agapo Lou. Is that Agapo to, um... Sorry, just a shout out. To... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, so, on, so. yeah, so so people people have that thing that lingering thing behind their head is if I play or if I get to uh, if I get injured, will I get the uh, right yeah. uh, will I get the right treatment for me to continue playing football? So I think that's something we also need to look at again is it's not just I know we always talk about the on field side, but then there's still the behind the scenes side, the administrative side as well. And looking Definitely. at sports medicine and sports science. I know it's it sounds like uh it sounds like it's not doable, but it really is. It's all about everything. Like, do we have the mindset or are we willing to take that next step? I think if we are, um, I don't see any reason why we can't achieve things for sure. Why? Because I know I was also part of a conversation lately where I learned something in the sports uh, sports medicine side, or would you say sports science side? I don't think medicine. Uh, we, the conversation was more about anti-doping. And it was about how there are so many illegal substances that are actually in things that you wouldn't even know. So I think that education of that is very, very important from a very early age. Because you could think, don't don't quote me on this, because I know somebody might quote me, like, you could think having a, a cup of, um, of a particular type of tea is good for you. But then you find out that there are actually some substances in that tea that one shouldn't consume. So it's very important to learn those side of things as well. And um, I don't know, sort of like, even, even when you're at the grassroots level, but you feel your budding and you feel you're going somewhere, it's important to look into the areas of um, insurance. So, because I know, you know, abroad, a lot of our players, Drew, you would testify to that. They're very well insured medically. So these um, issues, which Ozo just spoke about, don't really come to them. Am, am I right in saying that? Dr. Drew? Oh, what did you say? Sorry. My, my screen is playing off. Oh, yeah. we, we, we were looking, talking about the issue of, um, of, of the, the health factor, where people are scared that if they get injured, you know, things like that. So I'm saying that we know a lot of players abroad have health insurance that yeah, covers yeah. them for things like that. Um, uh, I, I'm saying that it's something that we need to educate our Nigerian players about as well to ensure that they have that all the time. Am I correct in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Most definitely, you are you are, you are saying the truth. Um, uh, they know about it in Europe. If you're there, I mean, the agents should advise you on that. You know, insurance is always good because it's, you know, football is a business. You know, anything can happen. So it's good for you to insure yourself. But the problem is that most of our our players, that from their background, they don't know finance. They don't know anything because. Uh, insurance it has to do with finance, you know. So and sometimes uh, the, the agent could care less if they if they if they invest or not, or you know if they insure themselves. So it's up to them to take that up. But I think in Nigeria there's nothing to do. I don't think anyone is thinking about insurance right now. But uh, abroad, that is it's important. a hundred percent that you need to even even the agents the agents need to insure themselves. Everybody needs to insure themselves. You know, so 
Okay, so I have a question for Dr. Drew from Ismail underscore A. Ismail says, um, question for Mr. Drew. What challenges have you have experienced identifying talent? And how do you think scouts can overcome these challenges? So, you know, what challenges have you had identifying talent? And how do you feel these challenges can be, can be overcome? Uh, to be honest, I'm not a scout. <laughs> I'm just an agent. So the scout will do their job and bring the player for me. And um, what uh, the, the truth of the matter, I've got my box. I got my box. I tick when when something's falling in place for me. I'm good with the players. I'm not very fussy, you see. But uh, I I have this instinct. If I see a player, I know if it will fly or not. But the 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 the, 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 the biggest issue that me personally I have with players is that is discipline, attitude. I could. I could smell if you have a bad attitude or, you know, if you are not disciplined because some people will try to do that uh, eye service for you, try to be nice to you. But I always judge you from the way you treat your mates. There's a, there's a situation, there's a player in Nigeria that I wanted to, that uh, we were working on. The guy was very good with, uh, with the guys, with everyone, was cool. So he got into the car with us. Someone rang his phone. He was like, shut up. Don't call this phone again. He's like, like, it was, the way he was on the phone, I said, oh, wow, <laughs> this one is... You know, it's like two face. So from there, I just I was very careful. You know, so you know, attitude and discipline is is, is what yeah, I look out for. Okay, great stuff, great stuff, gentlemen. Um, okay, it has been a great conversation. I'm trying to see if there are any more questions that need answering. I see one that says, "Why doesn't the sports ministry take care of of our players?" And they do. If you check, um. If you check some of the statistics lately, you can see that the sports ministry led by Mr. Sunday Diary has been taking care of a lot of our players. So um, we've done that. Question is for Mr. Drew. I really want to know how uh, how you negotiate with clubs. I think you need to DM him on that one. Let him give you the skills. He might charge you for the, for the session. I think I'm not so sure. So guys, I don't know. This is the first of its of its of its kind. Talking with us or talking with Dr. Drew. Unfortunately, we couldn't get Kola on. Um, but I hope uh, if we decide we want to do this again, that we might be able to get Kola on. So guys, if you know you'd like us to come back and have this conversation again, please drop your comments now and tell us when. Because Dr. Drew, I think you told me earlier that there's actually a, a, a major match happening right now while we're talking. Am I correct? <laughs> no, the Champions League game will soon start. The Champions League game will soon start, so everyone is actually on the run. Okay, I have started. It's just about to start. About it, about it. We need to run. Everyone is about to run. We, we need to get we need to get uh, Polo on this now. I got Polo. Ah, okay, is he, is he able to, to request to join? If he requests to join, no, not, not um, although may we need to let him today. in. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. Oga, hello, are you there? Just uh, request to join. And Kola, if you're with us as well, please request to join or give us some comments in the comment section. Like I said, I'm special assistant on ICT, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> please come back soon. We want you to come back. Please, we want hey! you to come back. Oga, <laughs> hello. Um, you have no shirt on, sir. It's Oga, hello now. Oza. What endorsement for you? Hi, my dear man. Thank you. We are good. You guys are doing well, man. I'm proud of you guys, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But I, I'm looking for a team. Uh, um, Duru, what is going on now? What's up? Give me a team now. I can no, play. No, no. Dr. Drew is the person you need to A full team? No, no, no. On that follow, you know the situation. Uh, the pandemic, the corona, the COVID. The COVID is an issue. After the corona, oh, no. we can sort you out. <laughs> are you sure? No, but, but on a serious note, the boys are coming back to Nigeria for the international break. And a few of them will need endorsements. You know you are the king of endorsements. You have, you have given over, over 350 celebrities endorsements. Also, has he given you one? Let's know no. now. No. Ozo is a fine boy, yo. So, you have, you have to it's not just a fine boy, Dr. Drew. He's a fine boy with something upstairs. He's given us a lot of technical <laughs> advice on this. Uh, no, we, uh, we, also, we also definitely we're gonna work on the football thing. 
I like what you are doing. No matter you are working with my enemies anyway, but uh, it's all good. Uh, um, but who is working with your enemies? But when I when I come back, when I come back to Nigeria, we will sit down and discuss. Um, you know, I started. I started my my real business with uh, football. You know that. Um, of course, Kano and uh, I, Kocha. Yes, I I did the deal. The first day for JJ from Paris Saint Germain to to Finabache. Oh, and we did it again from Finabache again to Bolton. We drive me and JJ drive almost nine hours from France to to Bolton to to sign that contract. So it's a journey that uh, I, I I done for so long. So, but we are doing something here in Dubai. Which there's a, a big club we are working with the academy teams here because they want to change the way they they are thinking before. You know they want older players and now they want to change it to newer, the younger yeah, team. Yeah. Anyway, when when I come back to Lagos, we we'll sit down. Come to London first. So I'm in Abuja at the moment, but I want you to come to London first. No, I, I don't want London for now. I'm just happy in Dubai <laughs> where I am at the moment. But uh, after that, I will come back to Lagos. So we can discuss more about football, particularly the grass loot and what we can do because I want to come back to who I am before. You yes, know, yes. not only music anymore, but we, we go back to full entertainment, which is sports, music, and uh, which there's a lot of promo. I'm, I'm setting up a business here, full-time business over here. So we have yes. a, our headquarters over here. So that's what I'm here for. But when I come back, we discuss more. And we we we'll, we'll see what we can do over this side of the world. We'll, we'll come to the office. Okay. We'll come to the office right. in VI. Yeah. One, Definitely. One thousand and four. One thousand and four. Uzo, Uzo, you need to you need to you need to you need to decamp. Uzo, you need to you need to you need to join the moving train. Decamp. Uzo, Uzo, the hot seat. Ah, Nigeria where, is about to be where you are. When, Right now, <laughs> where you are. When we, when I come back, we discuss more for them, man. But uh, oh, I like no, what no. you guys are me... Wow, that's Happy. so amazing. <laughs> but it's a privilege having you here. This is the Godfather. It's a privilege having Polo on this. You know, this I've known him for. Over no, I, years. I like, I, I really like what you guys are doing. I'm excited because what you guys are saying is the fact. Nigerians, since JJ Kano, Taliba West. Okay, Chuku, all those uh, Daniel Omokachi era is, is all gone, and the new new generation yeah. now, we don't know really what what is happening, but it's time mm -hmm. for us to find the new JJ, new Kano, new all these guys again. Yeah, the big yeah, brand, you know? the so, big brand, the big the big name, superstar name, superstar you know? name. So, yeah. but um, thank you guys. Thank Keep you. Thank out. you, sir. I will see you guys soon. Okay. Right. Thank you Thank so you. much, sir. Right. We we right. really appreciate you joining us. Thank you, sir. All right. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. Great. I think we should just round up now. Because yes, we can we can round up now. So the question we threw the question to the audience as to whether they would like us to come back. And I've seen a lot of answers saying yes, 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 please. Um so I think the video is still gonna be on Azul's um timeline, right? And people can comment on that when they would like us to come back and what topics they would like us to discuss. This, this platform is about us being able to discuss and prefer solutions as to how to move forward. So if we see that there are any gray areas that we need some help, um, we, we can prefer solutions to the government. We have a listening minister, uh, Honorable Minister Sunday Dare. He might probably join us if we convince him enough to join us for the next um, session. So Why thank not? you so much, guys. Thank you. Really, really appreciate. It. Do you have any last, uh, last comments? Anything last you like to say to si the audience? Simon Moses, Simon Moses, <laughs> how are you? So Super Eagles players, yeah. Super Eagles players, are, uh, are on our. Oh, Super Eagles side. players yeah. in the house. Yeah. Welcome, yeah. much yeah. respect. In my language, we say you must give respect to whom it is due. So much respect to the Super Eagles players in the house, appreciating yeah. what we do. So um yes, last last minute uh, round up from Drew and then we go to Azor and we close it so we can go watch that match. Next week Kola will come on. Kola will come on next week. <laughs> so okay. for Kola, yeah.
Caller. Okay, yes, Caller will be here next week. So, um, and I guess we'll have some answers to questions of how you can become a budding football football star. Nigeria needs you. We need you. And we're not going to let any talent fall by the roadside or by the wayside. We will scoop everyone up as much as we can. So please, please get more involved. We'll see, you know, more that we can do. Ozo has all the technical, tech so Ozo, please, bamboozle us with some more technical just before we go. <laughs> no, 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 it's time to just go ahead for the game. I just thank you for, for everyone's time, everyone that came on. Uh, I'm really grateful and um, I don't know, I'm overwhelmed with the opportunity that I have now and thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. John, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rita. Thank you to everyone that tuned in. I think we hit a close to 2,000 people. So thank you to everyone that tuned in. And uh, we will let you know when we'll be back again and what the conversation will be about. Any questions, drop it in the comment section. Thank you, everyone. We love you so much. And have a wonderful night. And may the okay. best man win tonight. <laughs> uh, good night. Okay, Good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>